I recently had the opportunity to meet up with Captain Justin Dudley of Third Coast Sightcast down in Sea Drift, Texas. We fished the greater Port O'Connor area out of his Maverick HPX polling skiff. We spent two days on Matagorda Island sight casting with tailing reds and inches of water. We were off the water by three o'clock each day. We pulled shallow mud flats and caught more fish than I care to mention. Here's a short interview with Captain Justin Dudley of Third Coast Sightcast. Hey folks, this is Justin Dudley, uh, Third Coast Sightcast, coming at you from the Greater Port O'Connor area on Matagorda Island, just enjoying some spectacular December fishing. We really couldn't ask for any better conditions than today. Yes, Yesterday was, was top notch as well. So uh, it's not that often that we get these calm winds and good high tides here in the marsh in December. So we're taking advantage of as much of it as we possibly can today. Why do you fly fish versus conventional? If it's not hard, I'm not interested. Not to say that there can't be days when it's difficult to go out and uh, find fish with bait or soft plastics, but when you factor in the wind and the shallow water, man, if it's, just, if it's not hard, it's not fun, you know, so. Why do you fish Texas? What makes what makes Texas special? Uh, born and raised, right? So I grew up in Hayes County. Um, I've been coming down here for the last six or seven years consistently. And, um, you know, honestly, this portion of Texas, uh, it, it has the most consistent clean water that was close to me. And so I'm glad that I ended up here, but what has really kept me here is just the shallow water. I love that little fear in the back of your mind that maybe we're going to get stuck today. And that's just kind of all part of it. Figuring all those little aspects out have, have been a lot of fun. There's so much diversity. That's what I really like about the area. No matter what time of year it is, um, you can find sand, you can find shell. In the wintertime, we can get back in the marsh on the mud. It's, it's not a long boat run, you know? Um, we can really access a lot of these places pretty quick from the ramp. So, a lot of diversity. I really like the, uh, the ability to run to the jetties and fish for jacks, go out on the beachfront when it's real calm, chase after small tarpon. Um, so yeah, if I had to boil it down to one thing, Texas is, is just diverse. What makes redfish cool? I grew up hunting and uh, you know, I always bass fished. This is basically hunting on the water, you know? For the most part, I, I like that term, you know, honest fish. Uh, if you do everything you're supposed to, more often than not, you're going to get a quality eat. They've got some good fight. Uh, and even if it's a 17, 18, 19 inch fish, you know, it's still a rewarding, uh, a rewarding fish to have on the end of the line. So. The biggest changes that I've seen in our area, um, and it may not necessarily affect the fishing, is just the mangrove. Um, the freeze that we had in 21 was so hard on the marsh. You, know, you could live in Houston 100 years and not see what we're about to experience as we head into Sunday. Seeing the snow on the sand, something I'd never seen. And it's really changed the, you know, the visuals of the, the landscape that we fish in every day. It's slowly starting to come back, you know, but it, it does look bleak from time to time, you know. So I would say that that's probably the biggest change in the environment or the fishing since I came out here is just how rough the, the freeze was on the mangrove in 21. Uh, we had a, a pretty ferocious eat here just before we sat down to have lunch. Good quality cast, put a fly in the water, and I mean, we had a redfish almost completely come out of the water after he ate that fly. So that was pretty cool. Um, he actually jumped and, and we missed the hook set. We were able to put the fly right back to him and he chased it down again. So some of the fish we've had over the past couple of days have been weary. Maybe they gorged themselves on the dump that we had earlier in the week and some of them are very hungry. That was uh, that one that we had just before lunch though was definitely hungry. Um, it can be frustrating to, to blow a cast. Luckily, we're in such a beautiful place that's so plentiful with fish that if you just grind it out and stick to it, you're gonna have another opportunity. 
there's a lot of customers that come down, people that I fish with that are really concerned, you know, about a lack of casting ability or how far will they have to cast. And that's what's great about this slick shallow water. If we're calm and we hunt these fish, we can get into 15, 20 feet and flip a roll cast. Or if you want to bomb one out at 85 or 90 feet, you can catch them like that too. So, you know, just get down here and come fishing. Uh, don't worry about the casting. Don't worry about the missed opportunities or the missed fish. You know, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard for somebody who does it every day. It's hard for somebody who's been doing it for 50 years. They, they blow shots all the time. So just got to stick with it and grind the day out and, and generally put some fish in the boat. All right. Thanks, everybody. Justin Dudley, we're going to drop everything down in the description below. You can get all of his contact details there. Get him booked up. Get out here. Come enjoy this beautiful Texas marsh, man. Redfish have been thick, tons of shots, a uh, little temperamental at times, but you keep throwing it in front of their face. Eventually you force feed them and they'll eat it. That's so right. Uh, that's right. We'll drop his stuff down below. Go check him out. Get him booked up.